chapter number 16, verse number 16, uh, we will uh, be talking and continuing our series on uh, healing as a part of our Lighten Your Load series. And uh, I want to invite and welcome all of us. If you're missing <clears throat> any parts of these series, they are indeed uh, online. As, as a matter of fact, you may should take out your phone and just share Facebook, uh, our Facebook post, and make sure all of your friends and loved ones that may not be able to be here uh, know that they can tune in online free and live and capture a very powerful message. You can also do that every single week, all right, and just invite people uh, even live to just check us out online at Facebook on the Way Christian Center page, and uh, they'll get a good couple of songs and hopefully a sermon that will bless them and uh, invite them to lighten their load this summer. Uh, again, we are in Acts chapter number 16. We're starting at verse number 16. And uh, follow along on the screen. And uh, if you are able, uh, this is what the word of the Lord says. One day, talking about Paul and Silas, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the Spirit came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that her, their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. Verse number 20, when they had brought them before the judges and the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing, ordered them to be beaten with rods, and after they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison, ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So on this Father's Day, I'm going to uh, try to speak a little bit uh, to us as... as uh, fathers and mentors and, and, and men, but certainly I think it's a relevant word given all the challenges we've been seeing and experiencing over the last several weeks. Uh, I want to encourage all of us to be a healer. Be a healer. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we may not sin against you. Lord, I pray that you'll touch me, let's stand to teach and preach your word, send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. In Jesus' name we pray, let the people of God say amen. amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, be a healer, be a healer. Why don't you pat yourself on the chest and say, I am a healer. Now, many of us uh, certainly can appreciate that we are living in perilous times. We are living in moments where it is obvious that there is trouble that is around us and that trouble can reach up and grab a hold to you and I, even if it is not indirectly or directly impacting us, the indirect nature of all of the trouble that is being cultivated by all kinds of of hateful, mean-spirited folk, dare I say folk who are not just full of the devil, because how I many know that you you around folk full of the devil all the time? 
But now these folks seem to have a license to let that devil just pour out their mouth, dictate their actions, and they are being, in many respects, triggered to do all kinds of things. And, and certainly last week we came to church and just had been uh, inundated with all of the, 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 the just terrible death that took place with uh, predominantly uh, Puerto Rican, Latino, LGBT folks in that club and over 50 individuals were shot up and killed and another few dozen found themselves uh, having to deal with the aftermath of automatic weapons being unleashed upon their bodies and, and then on the earlier part of this week we uh, were downtown and uh, heading to the city council meeting and on my way there I saw some of the young people, was a couple hundred young people out in the street like it was, looked like it was a white party. Everybody had on white and you know I, I saw some of the young folks that me and Sharice uh, and Tanisha we used to work with, Sister Nancy at the BTEC. Some of them were out there, everybody was there mourning the loss of a couple of friends of theirs who who had uh, drowned during Memorial Day. And as I walked through the crowd, I, I started to then notice after one of the young young folk, you know, hollered out my name, Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike. And, you know, good thing I had on a collar and whatnot, so I wasn't as embarrassed. Like, Lord have mercy, I guess it's not a secret that I am a pastor. Amen. Walking <laughs> down the street with my collar and forces on. But, um, you know, after she gave me a heads up of what was happening, I started to look more deeply into the young people's eyes and it was clear many of them were mourning the loss of their friends. Some of them were, you know, uh, puff, puff and passing and, you know, uh, obviously self-medicating themselves because, you know, who, who expects to lose a friend in that kind of way? And then on my way back, I walked into the middle of the aftermath of a of a shooting that took the life of 16-year-old Ray Jeanne Jeffries and the same young people who were there a couple of hours ago mourning the loss of their friend are now mourning the loss of another friend who had just got done praise dancing at this this uh, repast celebration and 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 the whole week you know uh, I, I I was just so deeply. Uh, filled with all kinds of, of angst and and thank God for Brother Landon Hill who who's one of our, our good young young center they healers I call them healers here from the church and and we got a And trauma that is not of trauma that can invade our lives without an invitation. And I'm just so aware that often one of our great challenges, certainly as fathers, as men, particularly men of color in this society, is that we are constantly exposed to trauma that is often uninvited. And because of what, uh, you know, some of my, my feminist friends would say, toxic masculinity, uh, because of this idea that being a, a man means that you don't, uh, shouldn't show any kind of pain and vulnerability and, and you should just be uh, the, 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 the impenetrable rock if you will, that, that, that never shows weakness, never shows uh, the, the effect because you and I are often told you better stop crying and you better suck it up and you better push through. And I get it, I understand it because some of us, you know, growing up in some of the neighborhoods we grew up in, hey man, you, 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 you probably wouldn't make it that far just crying all the time. <laughs> amen. Walking down the street just boo-hooing, amen. I mean, you could, how I many know you could invite a whole nother set of challenges? 
I wish I could talk to somebody in here today. So there's a whole lot of deep contradictions, amen? Amen. We, we know that we are created as human beings in the image of God. We know that all of us have the capacity to feel pain, to feel hurt, that none of us are exempt from that no matter how we may be engineered. How many know even those who go to fight in wars, and are trained as killing machines. Don't you know that your psyche, the way you are created by God, will only allow you to do so much of that before your whole system just breaks. And see, part of what you and I have to keep remembering and realizing is that hurting people hurt other people. And when you're not dealing with your trauma, you can be one of the most well-intended people in the world. But you won't be able to escape your humanity. Hello, somebody. Your human weakness, all of us have it. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them you got some human weakness. Amen, amen. You got a part of you that you are definitely susceptible to vulnerability, to failure, to mistakes, to unintended consequences. So knowing this to be true, my brothers and sisters, to you today is that God is calling for a group of people aware of the truth of who they are, that we will do all that we can to love ourselves enough to heal ourselves. Not just walk through life thinking that the longer I get away from that drama, it will just work its way out. It don't work its way out. Sigmund Freud said that which is repressed will eventually rise to the surface. So you can bury it, I can bury it. If I don't deal with my stuff, my stuff will deal with me. But this is a challenge for us men, right? Uh, Brother Wayne said it so powerfully. A lot of us don't get together because, you know, the only time we get together is to try to do something that don't require us to do a whole lot of talking. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, yeah, man, let's watch that game. You know, then you be with somebody. I'm the same way, and they just want to talk all through the game. You're like, I'm, why, who, who, who brought him? <laughs> Watch this game, man. You in here messing up the vibe. You got people want to talk about deep stuff all the time. Man, we, I mean, we, come on, man. Anybody ever met by folk like that? It's just like, man, I'm not trying to get all deep while I'm watching the game. I'm trying to see who going who gonna to do what. But that usually be the only time when we get together, we playing games. I went to get my hair cut. Y'all obviously know that I'm, you know, got a lot of hair on my head. Ever since I came back from Palestine, I've just been, my clippers is broke, so I ain't been able to get no clippers. And, and you know, uh, so I had to go get my hair cut so I wouldn't look like uh, Samson. <laughs> so I'm in, the, I'm, in the, I'm in the barber shop, and I hadn't been to a barber shop in years. And I tell you, I just the brother that was cutting my hair was talking so much. He messed up. It just did every stuff I didn't ask him to do. I said, you know what, bruh? You talking at the wrong time. I need you to focus, focus. Well, folk in the barbershop, so enthralled in conversation. But you know, I was wondering to myself, man, this this is this is this is you know a lot of bravado in here. Obviously, folks was embellishing everything they was talking about. <laughs> I'm saying to myself, there's not a lot of truth in this room, praise God. So where can you go, men, brothers, to get some truth? Because you got to have the truth. Working in your life in order for you to be set free from some of the crazy, destructive things we've been programmed to believe. How many of you know that part of why we must be saved, Jesus comes to save us, 
it's not just because, you know, uh, uh, you know, there's just a little bit of wrong with us and Jesus coming to kind of, you know, taper, you know, kind of, kind of smooth over the rough edges. No, you just rough. There ain't no edges, rough edges. Jesus is coming. Listen, scripture says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. All this old stuff that you have been contaminated with, Jesus coming to, to, to weed that stuff on out of your life and infuse you with something brand new. My pastor, Dr. Oxford Days down in San Jose, Dallas is patient for many years. And, and every day, he has to, three days out the week, he has to go sit on a dialysis machine for about four hours as the blood in his body is literally pumped out through a machine, purified, and then put back into his body so all of the toxins will not kill him in the process of a few days. What do you think about this for a second? Our physical bodies are created by God in such a way that our bodily process will rid itself of all the toxins that you don't even know you put in your body. Because if you don't rid yourself of that and store it up too much, your body will eventually succumb to the toxicity. Now, if this is true in your physical body, can you imagine brothers who've been raised in an environment where you've been told everything about you is problematic? And you've not spending any time anywhere seeking healing, seeking liberation, seeking to help facilitate healing for others, seeking to be an agent of liberation for others. This is the call, I believe, of each and every one of us who are clear about why we were created and who created us. Because if you are your own, People don't say that, but people believe, people act like that. I, I am unattached. I, 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 I just, I'm just here. I don't have no responsibility to anyone. And I'm going to live my life in such a way where I don't owe it forward or backward. That's a problematic way of living. Because we are not created to be on God, God's creation, and how do we allow it to be pulled out and how do we replace it with, like my pastor, that that purified, good, profiting off of our misery. They, they stoke our hatred and then wonder why do we respond with violence. They feed our fear and wonder why we're so irrationally holding on to weapons that have never been successful creating peace. What you think about this? Because I have people tell me all the time, Pastor Mike, you too altruistic and you, you, you want us to just to lay down to all these, these violent people around us. I'm like, well, you just showed me one time in history where killing your enemy actually created peace. Now, I know for many of us, amen, we think it will create safety, security, 
So I'm going to take you out before you take me out. How many heard that before? Better them than me. I'm just saying now. I mean, Pastor Mike, you got me out here messed up. I mean, these people trying to take my head off. But ain't it interesting that everybody that you take out, you got to live the rest of your life waiting for their family member to come and return the favor? That's what these wars are about. You, when we were over in Palestine, it was so fascinating listening to some of the folks talk about all the many people that they lost, been killed by Israeli soldiers, been, been harmed by even some of the own uh, 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 terroristic activities. And, and, and they're all over there trying to kind of pay some debts, repay some debts, fight for self-determination and liberation through violence. And my brothers and sisters, I got to tell you that Dr. King was right that violence does not create peace. Violence creates more death. And we have to be people who are able to not only internalize submit myself to practices that heal my victimization. Ooh, now that's some hard work. It's just like, I, got, I already got a nine to five job, Pastor Mike, you up here. Tell me I gotta come home and do some more work. Yes, you do. Because remember, your trauma, your victimization is not a neutral force in your life. Brothers, if we're not working on our trauma, sisters, if we're not addressing our trauma, people of God, if you, we are not addressing our trauma, you will go throughout the rest of your life overdetermined by that which God seeks to set us free from. And I am convinced God wants to set you free from that so you can be free for God's work. in this story you got Paul and Silas two fellas who should be you know these exact like you know they, they some pretty high ranking Jesus followers now remember Paul used to be a hit man when his name was Saul Paul was a hitter he, that's what he was they, hey Paul we got some Christians Paul be like cool just give me an address slip it under my door no questions asked Paul was Frank Nitty. Paul was, was Frank Lucas. Paul was a hitter. And, but, but on his way to take out some folk, God interrupted his life. Let me just pause right there. Aren't you glad God interrupts your life while you on your way? Ooh. I mean, no, there are some things. <laughs> Lord, and it, you know, you may not have been on your way to kill nobody. But how many of you know there was some situations and the building was on fire? And you running headlong into the building. And people trying to tackle you and you dodging. And God's trying to get people to get you out of the harm's way. And you just running till God had to sit you down. And he was like, oh. God, why you allow this to happen to me? I, you know, upset with God because God had to sit you down, interrupt you. You ought to give your neighbor a quick high five and tell him, I thank God for the interruption. Ooh, because if God didn't interrupt me, <laughs> I know my heart got broke, but I thank God for the interruption. I know I got fired off that job, but I thank God for the interruption. I know I had to go get a timeout in San Quentin, but I thank God. I'm just digressing all over the place. Paul and Silas on their way to the prayer house. And all of a sudden they run into a young woman who is being exploited by the city leaders and, 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 and people who are making money off of her. Kind of sound like the Oakland Police Department. And what's so fascinating about this story as I read it in light of all that's going on, Paul and Silas, two 
man of God engaged this young exploited girl. And the scripture says that they allowed themselves to just be followed around by her for days until Paul got fed up and he finally addressed her oppression. The first thing that I want to say to you, if you're going to be a healer, listen, men, we have to address our complicity in our own oppression and the oppression of others. Everybody say complicity. Paul and Silas did not address this the first day they ran into her. According to the scripture, I'm just telling you what's in the word now. You know, someone's got Paul and Silas next to Jesus. Like you can't say nothing about these flawed human beings. But they, their flaws will teach us something. Because they were not willing for whatever reason to address this oppression until they got so fed up with their own discomfort that their discomfort pushed them to address her oppression. And I'm just here to tell you somebody, a lot of us got a lot of complicity going on in our own oppression and in the oppression of others. And if we are going to be healers, we can no longer live our lives complicit in the oppression of ourselves or others. Now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you that there is never a time where God is not available to set you or I free. God could do on day one what God would do on day 30. <laughs> it's not like God's like, hmm, I don't know, this is my off day. The scripture says that our God never slumbers nor sleeps, meaning that God is a 24-7 God. God is always available to carry us through our circumstances. And, and I believe that there is a great truth about complicity to these kinds of systems that we're dealing with because often you and I can often uh, ignore the many ways oppression or anti-liberation forces are working and we can we can we can be so preoccupied that's why I love Jesus because Jesus wasn't so preoccupied about his own liberation that he forsook the liberation of others nor was he so uh, overwhelmed by others liberation that he forsook his own liberation and you and I have to maintain a balance here between the systems and structures and environments that are falling and in need of redemption just as much as you and I. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can participate in these fallen institutions and rather than redeem them, we can exacerbate the problem. How many know you could be a preacher and if you're not dealing with your stuff, you'll be one of them preachers that you read about in the paper and just start shaking your head. And I got to tell you, you know, you know th 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 I am not exempt from that possibility. I, I got to stay in front of God and just pray. Keep me near the cross. And all of us, didn't I, I start off by saying, talking about human weakness? If you are alive and breathing, guess what? You a human being. Did you know that? It's just, that's part of the Way 101 class. I know some of y'all missed that. Yesterday. So if you are a human being, guess what? You got weakness. Inherently, you are a weak link. Blind spots. Things that could easily, Scripture says, beset you. 
things that could pull you off course. So we can't be complicit by believing the hype of who we think we are, who others say we are, how people narrate this world and make us think that what God says about us in this world is not true. Listen, God gives you and I enough information to be healed and to be a healer, to be liberated and to be a liberator. The question for us is, will we listen? Will we participate in healing and liberation work or will we just, like Paul and Silas, on their way to the house of prayer? Oh, I'm just... And she kept, kept, as soon as she, oh, Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas. You ever met folk like that? You trying to avoid them? <laughs> Seem like they just can't always find you. It's the same person, too. It's like, who oh, me, bride? I'd be like, hey. <laughs> How you doing, man? My technique, I used to just talk to people and without, they just talk, you, you only want to talk a few minutes and they just keep going. So I usually just start. Yeah, I know, yeah. I don't do that to none of y'all here, praise God. Maybe God keeps bringing some of these folk in your space because God's trying to do some work on them and you. You and them. We and us. So don't, 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 don't uh, uh, ignore the assignments that often God will place in your life. Those kids, they're your kids. Your, that neighborhood, that's your neighborhood. That family, that's your family. If we don't keep showing up and taking care of our kids and our families and our neighborhoods, who else going to do it? Most of the time, our young people are just like us. When we were young, we self-medicated. We partied. We was rebellious. We tested a whole lot of stuff. Some of us, we, we just, you know, when it started to hurt, some of us, our pain threshold was just a little lighter than others. <laughs> it's just like, okay, just one time. That's all I need. I just need to be burned one time. Other of us had a kind of leprosy syndrome. Meaning, you know, because leprosy is about you not being able to feel pain. So for whatever reason, some of us just kept trying stuff till we hit rock bottom. It's like, oh, that's why they stopped that 10 times ago. <laughs> and if we're not there to love our young people and our families out of this trauma, we just think fussing at them. You know, pull up your pants and take that gold out your mouth and stop listening to that hip hop music and and stop smoking that purple and 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 go to school and and, and like would you respond to somebody talking to you like that? Listen, some of you on your job right now. If they don't say please in front of their request for you to do what you paid to do. <laughs> wish, I could, wish I could speak to somebody in this church. Am I telling the truth? Some of y'all know how you are on your job. Like they doing you a favor for letting you come to work today. I'm not going to do no work today. Can you believe they asked me to do some work? had a nerve to have a little roughness in their voice. They don't know who they think they talking to when they're feeling threatened. We got to unlearn some of this stuff. And if we don't unlearn it, brothers, men, if we don't show that you can provide safety not through aggression, but through Affirmation, strength that is not violent. If we don't model that, then how are they going to learn? How are they going to see? How are they going to know? 
We can't be complicit. Lord, my time is just moving. Second thing, I'm just going to run through these, these next ones. Second thing that you and I, we have to be willing to take a risk. Everybody say, take a risk. Yes. Now, now, Paul and Silas, of course, I don't know why Paul and them waited so long to do what they did, but it was risky to interrupt the status quo. If you're going to be a healer, if you're going to be a liberator, you got to take a risk and you got to know that that risky work of healing and liberation may put you in harm's way. The scripture says that Paul and Silas were taken before the judges of the city and they were told that they were disturbing the peace. Listen to this. This young woman being exploited was okay. When the liberators and healers acted to release and undo the oppression, that was disturbing the peace. I want you to catch this paradox here. Because a lot of folks feel like as long as you don't rock the boat, as long as you just let things go, as soon as you start standing up to gain control, to restore God's intent, folk going to feel like you disturbing the peace. They got drunk before the judges because they liberated this young girl who had been a money maker for a lot of folk. She was their economic engine. Kind of like the way they making money off our bodies in these jails and prisons. Male and female, females, black females, the fastest growing population of inmates in jails and prisons. Making money off these bodies. Spend $20,000, $200,000 a year to incarcerate. And as soon as the people of God stand up and say, that's evil, that's sin, they look at us like we. <laughs> Man, why are, you so, why are you so upset? Why I'm so upset? Some of that nerve tell me that this week. Pa Pastor McBride, you, you sure are angry. I said, I said, well, if I came up in your house and through the park, <laughs> hello, somebody. But our oppressors, these systems, would rather you be happy, jovial, while they're enacting a genocide on our people. I don't got no room for that kind of religion. And you shouldn't either. Amen. Don't you read the Bible in a way that will make you feel like you should allow folk to oppress you, me, our families. Amen. Jesus said like this, who the son says free is free. Won't you bound? It's risky to be liberated when folk want you to walk around in stocks and chains. But I believe that God is a God of freedom. For your soul, for your body, for your mind, for your spirit, God wants you free. And the only way you can be free is to live like it every day. I'm living a free life. And when I see stuff that's trying to not make me free, I'm going to speak up. And I'm going to take a risk. And I know it's going to be risky. I know you may lock me up in jail. How many know sometimes doing the right thing, you're going to get a consequence? Uh, some of us feel like the only people who get consequences are people that's doing wrong. But there's a lot of folk who got to pay a price for doing the right Jesus Christ. But guess what? In your suffering, God will make it redemptive. Meaning that God will help it to pay off. You'll get something out of your suffering. You may have to cry a little while. For those who do not throw in the towel, somebody holler free. So what risk, this is the question, are you willing to take to disturb the status quo? What cross are you willing to carry for the sake of healing and liberation? Last thing I'll say. Paul and Silas after they eat. But I'm here to tell you, even in the middle of your, your, your consequence for doing the right thing, you got to keep expecting liberation. 
That's what the healer needs to always lead with. You must be a very present help in the time of trouble. Though the world come against me, they are no bigger or better than God who is on my side. And when you can walk with that kind of determination, how many of you know that even when the enemy comes against you with everything that they have, you can still expect it, God? I know some of us, we can't see what victory looks like, but I don't need you to see it with your eyes. I need you to believe it with your heart because God told you that you are the head and not the tail. He told you you are above and not beneath. He told you that victory is in his hand. And if victory is in the hand of God, then all you've got to do is keep your hand in the hand of God. Or do I have somebody that knows that if I can just stay connected to, there ain't never been a door that God don't got the key to open. There ain't never been a sale that God don't know how to break you out of. If you can just sing your song, if you can just say your prayer, I believe God will come and visit you. you. Don't you know that he won't just set you free, but he'll set everybody around. Everybody that's there with you, everybody who's locked up next to you, God delivers everybody, not just one, not just two, not just three, but whosoever we saved, you shall be healed, you shall be delivered, shout hallelujah, somebody give the Lord a prayer.